Hello everyone, this is Prashant from Reliability Odyssey. So maximum application suit is a new reality and sooner or later all of us will be working on implementation or on the upgrade projects related with mass. So this is the right time for us to start learning not only about the different functional aspects but also the technical aspect, the administration related aspects to maximum application suite and this is what we are actually going to do now in this new series. So stay tuned and let's learn mass. So in order to start our learning, the first thing which we will be focusing is about the architecture and the different components which are involved with maximum application suite. So in this particular image, I have tried to show you what are the different components and what are the common terms which you will be listening when you will talk about maximum application suite. So first thing first is maximum application suite is an enterprise product which runs on Red Hat OpenShift. Red Hat OpenShift is a containerization orchestration platform. This is enhanced version of Kubernetes. Some of you might have heard the name and Red Hat OpenShift is the enhanced version of Kubernetes because it provides some better management capabilities that is readily available into Kubernetes. When we talk about Red Hat OpenShift, uh, the concept is that it has something known as master node as well as it has something known as worker node. Now you can have one machine on which you can have master node as well as worker node both installed. You may have an, have an installation where you are having multiple machine where few machines are for master node and few other machines are for worker node. The purpose of master node is to manage the state of the whole cluster and the worker node is where the application runs so in this particular case if you see the master node is something where you will be having all the information about the whole cluster available and it is responsible for the worker nodes to be up and application to be running on top of worker node if your master node is down the complete cluster will be down that's why you might have seen ibm talks about three master node concept if you have seen the infrastructure calculator, you will be able to see that they say that you can go for three master nodes um, when you are going for production instance, which provides the ability for, uh, for the environment that if one master node goes down, your cluster does not go down and your application is still available for the user. So if we focus on the worker node, there are two particular things that you will see. There are two boxes you will see. The first thing is what are the different dependencies? So these dependencies are certain things which is required for maximum application suite to perform its job. And there are multiple different components which are available. So the first component which we are seeing here is UDS. The second component is MongoDB. The third component is CouchDB. Then SLS, Kafka. You have the catalog and you have the cert manager apart from it you also have cp4d now these components some of the components are mandatory to have and they will be installed they have to be installed first before you install something known as mass core but some of the components obviously you can install later if you are not choosing a particular type of application so to explain this further we need to see what are the different roles of this component first. So first of all, you will know Kafka. Kafka is similar to the queues as we have. So uh, in Maximo 7613, also you have the ability to use Kafka. Kafka is a queuing system and it will provide us the ability to exchange data with external system. Then you have uh, catalog. This catalogs is nothing but a catalog available from Red Hat OpenShift and it has something known as operators. So all the installation, all the different things which you are going to see, which the different packages which are going to be installed on OpenShift will be running via operators. So this is a pre-given catalog available. So for Kafka, there will be an operator which will be available. You can go to this particular catalog and if you want to use Kafka, you can select that particular operator, you can install and configure that operator and then you can use this further. This is one of the way how you can include the, the given application. So it's kind of a marketplace where different kind of solutions are readily available. Then you have cert manager. Cert manager as the name suggests is certificate manager. So you will have different kind of certificates 
uh, you will have SLS or TL, uh, you will have SSL or TLS certificates. You might have some other kind of certificates which you need um, for different for different interfaces. So if you have any other kind of certificate that is required, it will be managed into certificate manager. The next component is UDS. The full form for UDS is user data services. So it tracks the user behavior. It also tracks about the license consumption and the app points. It will be also giving the ability for IBM to do the tracking of any specific features if they want. The next one is MongoDB. MongoDB is where Maximum Application Suite keeps its data dictionary and all the user management also happens at the MongoDB. The user creation happens at the mass core level and that data is kept into MongoDB. Then you have CouchDB. CouchDB is used with Maximum Assist. It's a new SQL based, doc new SQL, uh, based document type of database and Assist uses it. Um, then you have SLS. SLS is Suite License Services. This particular Suite License Services is very much required when you are going to do the installation at that point of time. You have to provide certain keys. You have to provide entitlement keys and you have to also provide the information about the app points. So the particular file where you have this information is actually managed by SLS. You can share SLS between multiple environment and you can also have separate SLS for different environment. So all these possibilities are there which we will be discussing in subsequent um, sessions but to understand SLS is, some, is very important where you will be keeping the license files and it will be managing the app points which will be used by uh, maximum applications with different applications then you have something known as CP4D uh, this uh, CP4D full form is cloud pack for data it is a service which contains multiple different uh, component the first one is DBTO warehouse. DBTO warehouse is used by monitor and uh, uh, this particular DBTO warehouse has ability to capture very high amount of uh, data on a very fast frequency. So monitor is an application which will be uh, talking to different sensors and on a very high frequency you will be getting the data. So DBTO warehouse is used by um, uh, monitor and then you have Watson Studio watson uh, machine learning and discovery western discovery these all are used by predict and uh, cp4d also allows you to uh, use these applications once you uh, install it so as you can see and understand that for some of them uh, you have some of these uh, some of the applications for example predict or for monitor these are some of the component which are prerequisite if you are not using it you can still go ahead for example if you are only using manage in that particular case you do not need to install uh, CP4D. You are okay to have all the other required component which will be installed when you are going to install the mass core. Um, the next thing we are talking about is the, the application box here and the first thing is mass core. So mass core is like TPAE platform as we have in Maximum 7.5 or 7.6. So this is basically a base application which provides the ability to run different add-ons and add different other applications on top of it and then it handles multiple different things for example it handles the user management and it handles um, talking to your IDP if you have any external uh, uh, IDP integration it also provides you different ability for example you have tools API you have uh, other core API so we will see that again uh, in the subsequent sessions but you have all those APIs are also available uh, being available by a mass core once you have mass core on top of it you will actually be adding different applications as per your need so you have assist uh, assist is something which provides uh, ability for your technicians to have remote assistance uh, AR VR related assistance then you have monitor again uh, I briefly discussed about it uh, so a few minutes ago you can use this particular thing for monitoring the asset if you have smart assets or you have sensors and you want to utilize that data you can use monitor to get the data and do asset performance uh, management maximum health provides the ability for liability engineer to see the health of the assets calculate the health score and identify uh, you know what are the different uh, assets which need attention maximum predict 
as the name suggest provides you the prediction capability where you will be able to find out uh, when is the failure going to happen and uh, you can find out RUL you can find MRR there are multiple different um, capabilities which are available as part of predict then you have manage this particular manage is the application which you have today as maximo EAM maximo manage is uh, is the primary application and this is the exactly the same application which you have obviously with some uh, the UI changes um, as Maximo 7.6 today um, you will see that uh, uh, in this diagram I have shown two databases so I have shown this DB2 uh, as a dotted database and then you have external DB so when you have the ability in OCP that you can choose where you want to keep your database so for example if you want to keep your database within the OCP in that particular case you can use um, the DB2 operator available and uh, you can have all the data within the within the OCP and you can also have external database so if you are using oracle ms sql server and specifically these two databases in that particular case you have to go with the external database uh, obviously you can also keep your ibm db2 external as well but if you want to keep the database internal in that to ocp in that particular case you must be going with db2 uh, one of the other reason why it is beneficial to keep the external db outside is because db takes a lot of resources and any db takes a lot of resources which uh, is directly in proportional to how many resources ocp needs so if you are keeping your external database in that particular case the resource requirement for ocp and installation and the server capacity required will be lesser so this is all of, all of the reason why you want to keep your database outside of ocp then you have other uh, IoT tools. These are the basis on top of it monitor runs and these IoT tools provide the ability to talk to uh, different sensors and smart assets using MQTT and other uh, uh, protocols. You can, may go for maximum visual ins uh, inspection. Uh, maximum visual inspection is a way how, why which you can use the computer vision to do the inspection for you. and. Uh, when you are going for maximum visual inspection you will go need to go for something known as gpu that particular gpu is something which will be required uh, on which the the ai model will be deployed and gpu will be used for that particular processing and you also have some add-on so you might have heard that maximum it is available then reliability strategy was one other application which was released all these are different add-on and apart from it you also have some other add-ons like rbm optimizer these are different application which you can use and you can add as per your need so these all are add-ons which are available and obviously it can be added on top of mass core so in a high level uh, this is the focus architecture i will say where we are going to see the different components which are available now let's go to the another slide if you go to the other slide i have shown you the external dependencies in this particular slide so apart from this you are also going to have some other kind of requirement for example you may have load balancer the load balancer is going to basically do the load balance of any incoming request to your ocp cluster you will also have you may also have LDAP integration for authentication. Maybe you have any IDP, for example, uh, Microsoft Azure uh, AD, which is obviously name changed to Entra. You have that if you want to use it. Um, then in that particular case, you can, you may have uh, external IDP and you can use mass core will be integrated and you will have that uh, integration available then uh, for sending emails you may have external SMTP and for storage of docklinks you may have to mount a NAS maybe you want to go for S3 bucket uh, these are some of the extra components which will be available apart from it there is another term bastion node that you might be hearing this bastion node is something it provides you an ability to basically access the OCP when the installation is going on and after the installation is done you uh, really do not need uh, bastion node obviously you want to update it you want to patch you want to patch your OCP you may want to keep your bastion node so that in the future you can use the bastion node to access the OCP cluster 